Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in A Planes. This time I'm flying the TU-134 by Alexander Malugin uh, originally and updated for X-Plane 11 originally was for an earlier X-Plane though. It sure doesn't show it. The, the cockpit is excellent and uh, it was posted on the forums, the xplane.org forum by Captain8 and uh, yeah, the internal cockpit is very nice. Uh, Payware worthy almost and uh, externally hmm well I could do with a different camo or livery let's see we've got a bunch I'll take a lot I uh, unfortunately there's no thumbnail right now you can generate thumbnails but this is simple enough we'll see it in flight Polish Airlines well gosh darn it I should have flown it in Poland um, <laughs> Uh, UT Air, maybe? What would be the most appropriate for Turkish? I don't know a Turkish airline except for Turkish Air, I suppose. Alright, this is fine. This is fine. Alright, so uh, external model is good. And... But really, the co the cockpit is very good. We'll, we'll see if there are any quirks that I should know about. But uh, not, not all this stuff is toggleable. The, the switches are not clickable or anything in general so there is that but otherwise looking good all right so with that we're continuing with the Apollo 12 audio and uh, they were getting ready to make their ascent from the lunar surface and rejoin the command module so pressing play on that and uh, Roger Dick we're talking about it Uh, Clipper Houston, uh, the data is only uh, in the event you want to try to watch liftoff. We're going to be flying to Istanbul today yeah, from Belgrade. I don't think I can see him very so let's keep it the sun angle too high. Okay, Dick. Apollo Control Houston, uh, you heard that exchange between Dick Gordon and uh, Capsule co Communicator Jerry Carr. What uh, the discussion evolved about uh, Dick Gordon aboard the Yankee Clipper uh, had the option of uh, tracking Intrepid uh, with his sextant uh, on liftoff. As you heard, he indicated uh, that the sun angle appeared uh, too high to to acquire a sighting so that uh, will probably be deleted uh, from the actual flight plan. We're at uh, 141 hours, uh, 21 minutes into the flight, uh, 42 and a half minutes away from uh, time of ignition, and this is Apollo controlled Houston. Feels like the plane has a rather big wing, actually. I like big wing planes, though. Um, the Airbus 330-200 comes to mind. It actually has a wingspan longer than the body length. Intrepid Houston, your gravity Leads to quite a lot of lift, of course. No uplinks to you this time. Very good, very good. Yankee Clipper, Houston. My hand. Roger, Dick. We're flying over Belgrade and, uh, again if I turn the camera, the time, but uh, I need to when you get VHF so trim this properly first. Established, uh, with Intrepid, we're going to dump the misfin relay. If for some reason you lose it and you want to you wanna hear the, the uh, Intrepid liftoff, let us know and we can uh, reconfigure in about 20 seconds. But we would prefer to leave the relay out as long as you've got VHF. Well, I'm going too fast. Sorry about that. I was looking at the map briefly. Sometimes that's what co pilots are for. Roger. That was Al Bean uh, aboard Intrepid. We're at uh, 141 hours at 23 minutes uh, now into the flight. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, now into the flight. 
Uh, Conrad and Bean now going through final phases of verifying navigational alignments. Uh, you heard that uh, call up from Jerry Carr commending the torquing angles on board as they're going through program 57 uh, lunar alignment. I don't know how but, long uh, we can follow the Dan uh, uh, we can't follow the Danube very so far. Checking status, uh, pulsing all of his flight control team as to our status go or no go, and we're standing by. It will be Houston, going along the northern border the of Bulgaria or the southern border of Romania. Apollo Control Houston. You heard that call from Jerry Carr giving him a go for liftoff uh, this rev. At uh, T minus 10 seconds, uh, one of the two, uh, probably Conrad, pushes the abort stage button, and the two stages, although still mated, are no longer mechanically secured to each other. Uh, the ascent engine is armed, and at uh, minus five seconds, Conrad pushes a proceed button on his computer display, telling it to continue on in uh, program 12 for liftoff. At uh, T0, he pushes uh, the engine start after verifying the engine is it indeed on. We're at uh, 32 mi uh, minutes now away from ignition, and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Yep, the acid from the surface is quite a harrowing thing. That's affirmative, Al, and they're going. That engine really has to work. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, uh, 42 minutes now into the flight. Uh, we're 22 minutes uh, away from the time of ignition. After ignition, uh, Conrad confirms that the limb is uh, stable and the altitude is increasing. Visual cues are prime uh, for the first 15 seconds. After pitch over is completed, uh, the crew will be able to make their first uh, solid checks on the primary guidance and navigation system's performance. At uh, liftoff plus four minutes, uh, Conrad uh, yaws and trip at 20 degrees right to ensure a, a continuing S-band lock. When time uh, from ignition uh, reaches approximately six minutes, 15 seconds, the onboard displays are changed from velocity and altitude numbers to velocity to be gained. You'll probably hear Al Bean calling uh, out some of these numbers. Engine uh, shutdown uh, monitoring is performed on board uh, simply by observing the velocity to be gained display. We're at uh, 21 minutes now away from time of ignition. Roger, Intrepid. We are still over Serbia. Um, the photo scenery ends at that line that you can see on the ground and we temporarily have the stock scenery. Not very different to be honest. At least here. Tank 2 looks good. Practically just uh, looking like a different season. That was Capcom, Jerry Carr, uh, telling uh, Intrepid uh, that uh, their tank pressures look good. Meanwhile, in the control center, our uh, upfront displays have switched over uh, for the uh, flight dynamics trajectory uh, displays, uh, the, the uh, lunar map uh, being taken down uh, for this ascent phase of the mission. We're at uh, 141 hours, uh, 44 minutes, and 19... Uh, minutes uh, 45 seconds away from ignition well this plane doesn't need a Roger, whole lot of thrust in order to cruise here which is good it's Apollo Control Houston uh, 149 hours uh, 49 minutes Mach 0.83 right now. Stand by, Intrepid. Again, uh, for those 
that uh, don't know the rules. I haven't been using autopilot at all. That's why it sometimes looks a little bit now. jittery uh, Houston, and not quite uh, smooth, as smooth a flight as you might hope off. for. But uh, it is all being Bad done three. manually. Intrepid uh, presently has program 12 entered on uh, their onboard computer. Uh, this is the uh, guidance program for lunar liftoff. We're at uh, 141 hours, uh, 50 minutes into the flight, and a little more than 13 minutes from time of ignition. It's Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 52 minutes now into the flight. Uh, flight Director uh, Pete Frank, uh, making a final check around the room as to the, our status for liftoff. We're 11 minutes, uh, 48 seconds uh, from scheduled time of ignition. This is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Now we're 10 minutes now away from time of ignition. Uh, 141 hours, uh, 54 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. FIDO reports we have high-speed data coming in from all three sites. Uh, we're at uh, 141 hours, uh, 56 minutes. Seven minutes, uh, 54 seconds away from liftoff at this time. Mark, five minutes uh, from scheduled time of ignition. We're at 148 hours, uh, 59 minutes down to the flight. Again, we're getting a very obvious example of how I've cut out the silent parts of the Apollo 12 audio. Four minutes away now. This is Apollo Control Houston standing by. Mark, three minutes uh, from liftoff. Is up Loud and clear, Pete. Roger. Checklist is complete. Standing by for six minus two. Roger. Okay. Speed Conrad reporting they have completed their checklist. We're at uh, 142 hours, one minute. I've seen a web page on how to sort of fix the shadows, but didn't quite get how to Mark two edit minutes. the configurations to do that and what kind of performance hit would be involved so it's weird I mean because obviously there's a jagged shadow but there's also a smooth shadow on this right now Roger Clipper so it's weird the smooth shadow is the one that is being cast directly by the Sun the jagged shadows are by the surfaces on the other surfaces, like by the body right, on right, the right. wing or the horizontal stabilizer on the wing and stuff like that. Mark, one minute. Master arm is on. Seven read. Got it. Well, let me look, look up this thing. UT air. Okay. Oh, it's a Russian airline. It's already retired its TU-135s. Okay, well, they're off the ground. Intrepid Houston, copy ignition, guidance looks good. Pete Conrad and Al Bean are on their way up. feet above the lunar surface. Mark, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 
1,594 feet above the lunar... Looks like they replaced this plane with uh, Sukhoi Superjet now, 100. Feet per second. Coming up on one minute. This program looks good. Intrepid Houston looking good at one minute. Yard right 20. Even right down the pipe. Okay. It's Conrad reporting they're going right down the pike. Presently 9,000 feet above the lunar surface. Well, apparently no Turkish airline flew it, but that's probably because, you know, Cold War stuff. Otherwise, it's a very popular plane. More than 800 made. Intrepid Houston, go at two. Two minutes, ten seconds, looking good. Everything looks good. Here it does. Not quite as many as the DC-9, but the DC-9 is bigger, judging from the windows. This might be more comparable to a regional jet. Squawk 2-1. <laughs> They're, they're talking airplane talk, of course. Flight levels. We're at flight level 30, 300, sorry, basically. Keeping around there. Dick would like you to transmit on VHF. Range to go now 137 nautical miles. Three minutes and 30 seconds now. 2130 feet per second, climb at 193, and we're at a 31,600. Okay. Hammer went off sometime after this off. I hope he's got the alpha. Still running. Turned it back on. Oh, I see. Wonder why we got the master alarm. I never did see anything. Uh, I didn't either. Everything looks good. Houston, you're looking good at four. Four minutes. Mark uh, four minutes eight seconds. Now traveling uh, twenty four hundred uh, oh, feet per second. I have turned oh, that, uh, a little bit too far north. There. Looking at all the details of this plane, we can see we should be over the photo scenery to the south here. We are over Bulgaria now. <laughs> and yeah, we accidentally crossed over the Danube again. Trying to get back on the right side of that. Now over 49,000 feet in altitude. Five plus thirty. Okay. Mark. Man, look at that crater we're flying. Okay. Over. They're calling five hundred. 
Velocity 3,800 3, feet per second. up on six minutes. of Bulgaria. 57,000 feet in altitude. Well, that's interesting. One city name pops out at me on the map right away. Montana. I didn't realize there was a Montana in Bulgaria, but we are headed for Montana now. 5,000 feet per second in velocity. Hope that's not too confusing. I'm sure Open. it's pronounced Open. with Open. some coming up on seven minutes in some different way, but it's definitely spelled Montana. Looking good at seven. Okay. We've had shut down. Okay, they are in orbit around the moon. Let's see, Montana, Bulgaria. After alarm, but I don't know for what. Everything looks okay. City of about 90,000, it looks like. Though that population's a bit dated. And that includes the surrounding area. Loud and clear, Pete. Okay, does that look satisfactory to you? Looks good, Pete. We copied your overburn and uh, we see your trimming now. Okay, I took it all out. Uh, I got interested in this. Uh, That's the city we see in front of us right out of our nose, Montana. It's by that huge lake. So it begs the question, what's the population of actual Montana? One million. Well, the Bulgarian Montana has room to grow from the looks of the surrounding area. We need to turn further All south to sources, go over uh, Sofia. Sure go. So I will do that. Sofia, the capital, probably the largest city Clipper of Bulgaria. Let me double check. Now. I wonder why he's not pressing VHF. Yeah, he yes, it is the largest city as well. You heard that report. Uh, there was a little bit of an overburn, uh, trimmed out very nicely. However, we're at uh, one. Uh, Houston Clipper is not reading a VHF. We're configuring for Miss Fen Relay now. Sophia has a population Trepid, larger uh, than the Clipper state of Montana. Houston, now we're in the relay mode. Hello, Yankee Clipper, Trepid, how do you read? Nice landscape here. Intrepid, uh, did you read Clipper's answer? Yeah, I read him. Preliminary uh, 
numbers would show an orbit of uh, 47 nautical miles by nine nautical miles, very close to normal. We're at uh, 142 hours, uh, 16 minutes, and now to the flight. Intrepid Houston, uh, looks like you got a 47 by 8.8, .8, over. Roger. So basically they're keeping one end low so that they're catching up Whoa, to the command Roger. module and then they'll lift it up at the appropriate time so that they can make the rendezvous. Generally after an orbit. Clipper Houston. Uh, I mean the initial part of the rendezvous. State vector for you. It's complicated. They have to do a whole lot of little rendezvous burns. Roger, on the way. It's not quite as simple in, as Kerbal Space Program makes it seem because they Apollo don't control, exactly know where each other is minutes now at all flight. times. Uh, a uh, preliminary look at uh, the burn status would indicate uh, an overburn of uh, some one and a half seconds, uh, which uh, was trimmed out by uh, Commander Pete Conrad as he... Uh, was removing his residuals from the burn. We're at uh, 142 hours, uh, 18 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. So yeah, there's a computer program to check how much delta V was provided by a burn, and then so there'll be a number displayed, and then they can use the RCS to slightly adjust that back to zero. Break clipper, your computer's yours. They program in how much delta V they want, We're and then VHF expect to et, uh, end up at zero. So this uh, fairly large city in front of us is Sophia. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we presently show the uh, Lunar module Intrepid uh, in an orbit of uh, 47.1 nautical miles by 8.7 nautical miles. For some reason, the power the plants always of, seem to uh, puff quite vigorously. Four feet per second. And then, just as I say that, it, the smoke disappears. Nope, it's at it again. Intrepid uh, once again in lunar orbit. Uh, once again, a spacefaring vessel. Intrepid has. Uh, now set sail for rendezvous. We're at uh, 142 hours, uh, 21 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Yeah, all the other factory buildings hardly ever puff, but the uh, power plants sure do. We got a deck, go ahead. Uh, negative, we don't need them. You read that? That's clear, I'm reading out, being not clear. We're about halfway to Istanbul now. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, we're looking at him, Pete. I want to say we could probably follow Sterling. the highway all the way. Okay. Okay. Not your probe. normal thing to do with an airliner, but still. Yankee Clipper, Houston, yeah, over. It's possible. Go ahead. Roger, Dick. Uh, how about turning down your S-band thumb wheel and make a VHF check, and if you're in good shape on VHF, we're going to break down this relay again. Dick, bring it down, Jerry. I can hear him now. Roger. Are you supposed to be on uh, breaching right now? Are you supposed to be transmitting on A?
Apollo Control Houston uh, at uh, 142 hours, uh, 25 minutes into the flight. The uh, Mission Control Center does plan to pass up a, an update uh, pad uh, for a concentric sequence initiate uh, the first maneuver in rendezvous prior to uh, loss of signal. We uh, Quite a sharp a valley show, over uh, there. Four minutes and 30 seconds uh, before loss of signal on the command module Yankee Clipper and five minutes. Very distinctive valley. 40 seconds on the lunar module. Rick, I hold you at uh, 351 feet a second at 200 miles. That valley might be formed by the Maritza River, it looks like. Let me look that up. I concur, I concur. Okay, I'm just starting to see 20. That was uh, Pete Conrad reporting to Dick Gordon uh, the range and range rate readings uh, he had on his uh, onboard display. Seems like the same river that forms this lake. In Mission Control Center of Houston, uh, we're presently reading a range of uh, 198 nautical miles uh, between the two spacecraft and a range rate of uh, minus uh, 331 feet per second. We're now at uh, 142 hours, uh, 28 minutes into the flight. Intrepid, we're going to go over to Omni now. Roger, Intrepid. Intrepid Houston, you're about 45 seconds from LOS. Intrepid Houston, we'll see you at uh, 143.16. Intrepid Houston, uh, your CSI Delta V is going to be about 46.5, over. Apollo Control Houston, uh, that was uh, Jerry Carr passing up the uh, Delta V for the uh, first uh, rendezvous maneuver. That was uh, 46.5 feet per second. We managed to get it up in the nick of time uh, just prior to uh, Intrepid uh, making its uh, backside pass around the moon. Uh, we've got LOS on the uh, clipper and we'll see him at 13. Okay, they get our uh, AOS sign. Your AOS time is uh, 143.16. It's nominal. Roger, nominal in the flight plan. Intrepid Houston, go low bit rate. I think this river below us here is the Merce River. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 142 hours, uh, 31 minutes. Uh, we've had loss of signal with uh, both spacecraft, both Intrepid yeah. and uh, Yankee Clipper uh, passing above the backside of the moon. The town there is Pazarjik. And 
Downriver is Plovdiv, which is a larger city. We can see a power this is plant Apollo there again. Houston at, uh, That's where Plovdiv is. Hours, uh, 38 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Both uh, Intrepid and Yankee Clipper uh, passing above the far side of the moon uh, out of acquisition range uh, with Mission Control Center Houston. Ground solution uh, continues to show a uh, forecast uh, time of uh, ignition uh, for the uh, concentric sequence initiate uh, maneuver of 143 hours, uh, 1 minute uh, 51 seconds. You heard the, the Delta V. Holding uh, pretty close to the limit here. To you can see uh, the just red line there. To, uh, going Basically out of a Mach 0.85. 46.5 feet per second. Been just We're hanging at, uh, out there. 142 hours, uh, 39 minutes now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. That's a good look for it. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 143 hours, uh, 14 minutes now into the flight. Uh, uh, we're less than two minutes away now from uh, reacquiring uh, Yankee Clipper as it uh, emerges uh, from around uh, the far side of the moon. A uh, report from our science uh, staff support room indicates that the magnetometer and seismometers both uh, had readings from Intrepid uh, at liftoff. Presently, uh, ground-based solutions in uh, the control center indicate uh, that uh, a uh, constant delta height burn of uh, some small magnitude uh, may be uh, accomplished or uh, done on this uh, front side pass. Uh, we won't know, of course, until we reacquire it, Intrepid and get their uh, CSI solution. Uh, ground computations would indicate a burn, uh, a constant delta height burn at 143 hours, uh, 59 minutes, uh, 53 seconds, uh, with a delta V of perhaps 12 to 14 feet per second. Uh, this would be done to uh, fine tune or smooth out uh, the wrinkles uh, in the uh, orbits uh, of the two spacecraft, uh, Intrepid uh, traveling some 15 nautical miles below playing catch up. While Intrepid is playing catch up uh, with Yankee Clipper, uh, the individual tasks for Conrad and Bean are probably divided uh, along these lines. Uh, Conrad operating the radar and the disky uh, during thrusting programs and making automatic or manual attitude changes. Uh, being uh, logging all maneuver solutions and systems performance and operating the disky except uh, when keyboard entries affect control of the spacecraft attitude of thrusting. I do sort of like the look uh, of this. We have Oops. acquisition uh, with uh, Yankee Clipper. Uh, no conversation taking place at this time, however. I like the look of this plane more than the Sukhoi we'll Superjet 100 at, uh, that replaced it. 43 hours, uh, 16 minutes. Uh, we're uh, 2 minutes 25 seconds away of uh, reacquiring Intrepid. There's a uh, more distinctive style. The Sukhoi Superjet looks more like a typical thing. Okay, sounds good. I'll be working on how to plane here for and you. Yankee Clipper the slimmer body the makes it look a little bit sleeker than... Uh, the albeit more efficient bulbous body that a lot of airliners have. That was Dick Gordon uh, reporting the uh, concentric sequence initiate burn was good. 
We're at uh, 143 hours, 18 minutes. So when we reacquire Intrepid, uh, we will probably receive a status report on that burn. This is Apollo Control Houston uh, continuing to monitor. So yeah, there's the interesting part where the two spacecraft can communicate with each other sometimes, but uh, sometimes only one can communicate back with mission control. Now processing data on Intrepid, uh, the lunar module. Still the Maritza River to our left. He'll eventually hang a right to go into the Aegean Sea. Roger, I'll read you the same. It uh, it forms most of the border between Greece and Turkey, actually. I intrepid Houston, we'd like to know what your delta V's were that you loaded. Uh, what do you mean, what delta V's we loaded? We loaded 45.3 feet per second, is that what you mean? A firm. That was our CSI solution. Okay. Okay, and I've uh, run uh, CDH here, and uh, looks like minus 9 and minus 8, roughly. Shows me uh, 59 seconds early at TPI. Roger. And we're not going to make the. Uh, that doesn't look like we need to uh, make the out of plane. And we uh, got in the noise level on out of plane. It's going for just a second, and I haven't looked at it yet, but I will in a minute. Roger. And Trumpet Houston, uh, can you give us high bid rate, please? Apollo Control Houston at uh, 143 hours, uh, 21 minutes down to the flight. Uh, we presently show uh, Intrepid and Yankee Clipper at a range of 131 nautical miles with a uh, range rate of minus uh, 75 feet per second. Uh, I tell you, Houston, I sure do enjoy flying this thing. It's, uh, both the SN stage and the DC stage are both nice. Roger, Pete. It was actually a cosmonaut training version of this plane. Uh, I cross-fed on the uh, CSI burn, and uh, that pretty evened me up. And I also switched my DAP load to uh, System A. Roger, copy. And uh, my out of plane shows 0 0.31 miles and three tenths of a foot per second, so I think we'll forget it. And actually, one seems to have been modified okay, Pete, that for. That sounds good. Uh, while you got a minute, uh, we had a question about the sequence camera. Uh, did that uh, camera stop right after liftoff? Apparently, it did. And then it stopped again several times. Had affirmative, it stopped, you know, I started it, and it stopped two or three times. Roger. You have all the camera problems. Anyway, um, at, uh, I think it was fitted with the landing system, the automated landing system for Buran. That TU-134. Uh, a space shuttle work model according to Wikipedia, but uh, the TU-134BV. Uh, the folks here say that was pretty nominal on uh, That's separate 11. from the Cosmonaut training version, which was TU-134LK. Oh, I didn't uh, remember that. Okay, very good. Uh, 
Okay, we're within a couple of about 15 seconds of one another. Okay, we're doing this short. Okay, 144 0 0 0 1.53. I got it, thank you. Intrepid, Houston. Go. Roger, Pete, I sent you bum dope. Uh, 11 did not use their heaters. Yeah, I don't remember anybody having to use them, but uh, both my docking window and uh, and uh, both Al's window and my window, we collected moisture on the lunar surface, and uh, we started collecting it here in place, so I put the window heater back on. Roger. Just prior to this call up uh, from Mission Control, you heard uh, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon uh, comparing uh, onboard computation numbers uh, for uh, CDH, the constant delta height, uh, whatever. So we're approaching. We're at, uh, 143 hours, 26 minutes uh, now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. We're approaching uh, a common border between Turkey, Bulgaria, and Greece. Sure, do apologize. Overburn, uh, I got my head looking at Al, and it's, uh, I'm trying to turn towards it. It's right Roger, at the junction between me. those rivers there. So, roughly to our right is Greece. Behind us is Bulgaria, and in front of us is Turkey. Well, I didn't do anything. We had one main shutoff valve safe barber pulled over here, and it turned out to be an indicator, but uh, I got interested in that, and I didn't see Army engines soon enough, and we shut down about 30 feet per second over speed, and I had to back around. And we're currently over Turkey now. The border between Bulgaria and Turkey does not have a river between no it. No big deal. At least not in this part. It's a straight border. city we see there is... Adirne, E-D-I-R-N-E. -E. We uh, presently show Intrepid and Yankee Clipper uh, 126 nautical miles apart. And we are going to start descending. We're at uh, 143 hours, uh, 28 minutes now into the flight. But we might have to wait until the next video for them to meet up. I don't know. I think so. Okay, I uh oh. Explain. That was uh, Pete Conrad uh, reporting. He thought he had a visual, a visual sighting of uh, Yankee Clipper. The two uh, spacecraft presently 122 nautical miles apart. We're at uh, 143 hours. Uh, 20 or 32 minutes uh, into the flight. 
I think the game was a little bit annoyed with me clicking out of the window so much. I was adjusting the map. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 143 hours, uh, 37 minutes uh, now to the flight. Yeah, it's working so hard keeping his eggs up to date the air. Why don't we let him burn CDH? Roger, Pete. Okay, get here. Houston, stand by on that. We're consulting our oracle right now. Consulting our oracle. But he's all over the cockpit. But the raise the ring tray did. That was uh, Pete Conrad uh, coming to Mission Control with a suggestion uh, that they uh, do their uh, CDH or constant delta height maneuver utilizing the eggs or the uh, secondary uh, guidance system. Uh, the point he made was that. Uh, Al Bean uh, was all over the cabin uh, constantly updating uh, uh, their eggs numbers uh, from the pings and uh, I guess he thought why not use them. Presently uh, we're showing Intrepid and Yankee Clipper 115 nautical miles apart. Uh, this uh, through our displays taking an over the shoulder look at uh, Intrepid's uh, computer readouts. We're at uh, 143 hours, 39 minutes. The town we are over is okay. Babayeski. Uh, we'd like to go over into the cabin mode uh, for a while. They do the go, but in the cabin mode and try and get rid of some of this dirt before we dock. And we are continuing on. Stand by. Yes. Intrepid Houston, uh, go ahead, use the cabin mode. Yeah, okay. Intrepid Houston, I have a Pippa Bias update read up for you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, verb 2 1, noun 0 1. Enter. One, four, five, two, enter. Seven, seven, four, two, three, enter. Enter. One, four, five, four, enter. Zero, zero, four, zero, six, enter. Enter. One, Four, five, six, enter. Zero, zero, seven, 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 enter. Over. Okay, let me see if I got those numbers all right. Verb 21, down on one, enter. 1452, enter. 77423, enter, enter. One, four, five, Four, enter. Zero, 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 four, six, enter, enter. One, four, five, six, enter. Zero, 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 step, step. Uh,
Intrepid Houston, that's negative. Address uh, 1454 should read 00406. And address 1456 should read 00777. Over. Okay, 1454-00406 and uh, 1456-00777. That's affirmative, Pete. Okay, Yankee Clipper, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, got some high gain angles for you, Dick. Go ahead, and I'll put my in there for you. Roger, pitch is minus two, three, and yaw is plus one, seven, one, over. I'm pretty sure we can see the Sea of Marmara there, which is uh, between Istanbul and, uh, well, basically between the Aegean Sea and the Black Sea. I swear, for a long time now, we haven't really been able to hear Dick Gordon properly. <laughs> for a long, long time. Okay. Okay. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we currently show the two spacecraft 103 nautical miles apart. Yankee Clipper Houston, uh, we're going to have a handover here now on your case uh, from Honeysuckle to Madrid over at uh, 143.50. Literally, the handoffs are because the world is turning. Apollo Control Houston, uh, meanwhile in the control center we have the ignition clock uh, counting down for CDH. Uh, we show 10 minutes and 30 seconds until uh, time of ignition. We're at uh, 143 hours, uh, 50 minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Yankee Clipper, Houston, how do you read through Madrid? Hello, Houston, Clipper, loud and clear, how many? They read you the same. Early, 
early, early to my side. 75. Approaching Istanbul, I've been fooled by the location of it before because it, I often think that it should be on that uh, curved beach, but it's actually beyond that. So I always descend too soon. That's alright since we're sightseeing and everything. Yep, I, I couldn't understand him either. Clipper, Houston, go ahead. I don't know if Houston's relay would help. Hey, Jerry, just tell him I agree with his solution. Is that him? Break. Pete uh, Clipper says he agrees with your solution. Okay, I guess it is pretty good at, uh, Houston's in. Okay, very good. Uh, and Jerry, tell him that... Uh, R down 81 was, uh, where'd you put it now? Minus 10.7, or is that 2? Minus 10.2 and minus 9.3. Roger, copy, now in 81, minus 10.2 and minus 9.3. Roger, roger. That's affirmative. And Flipper rogered that, he heard it. Lots of wind turbines around. Hey, you got any butts on the ground, Houston? Why our comm is so bad between each other? Uh, Pete, we're checking. Break, uh, did you get an out of plane from Dick? Uh, we don't have any out of plane. It was three tenths again or something. Oh, it's four tenths, Pete. Oh, four tenths of a foot per second. Clipper, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. This is Clipper. Uh, Roger. Just uh, thought we'd better make a check with you and see how your antennas are. Are you in the starboard antenna? That's where you are. I'm in the lower antenna, lower right. Roger. Okay, now we can clearly see Istanbul and the waterway between the Black Sea and so the Apollo sea control, to the south. Houston, the ignition clock and mission control the shows uh, now less than three minutes uh, from time of ignition for CDH, constant delta height uh, maneuver. And I want to land at LBTA. Oh, uh, sorry, LTBA. Which is. Two minutes away now from CDH. Here. Uh, this. At Turk Airport. Well, we'll fly over to city once and then curve around. This isn't the best uh, sightseeing plane, but the next one is worse. It's actually an Airbus A330-300 freeware, and we'll be flying it from right Istanbul to Batman. I chose Batman as a landing well, location, a mainly because of the name. <laughs> it's a pretty decent length flight, though. Nearly 600 nautical miles. So unfortunately, we're not going to get the best view of 
Istanbul, or at least not one with a very slow aircraft, but we'll do our best. says they're burning now. The buildings we can see he from okay. here are, I think, related to the airport. Burn is concluded. Houston. Roger, Pete, looks good. I think I've uh, gotten fooled again. This sort of gets tar shaped, I guess. Lake is obviously not the main waterway. Yep, I, I got fooled again. <laughs> it's a big city. It's pretty sprawling. Okay. Uh, the waterway is over there. I got fooled because of this bit, this stretch here. It looks almost like an alternate waterway here, but. Is it only a thin canal? It, it does sort of stretch across. Oh, I'm a little fast there. I don't really know what the thin waterway between Europe and Asia here is called, actually. It is what it is. Okay, now we can see more buildings and the lag is building. So I'll just work through that. The airport is right there. It's Apollo Control Houston at uh, 144 hours, uh, 5 minutes now into the flight. Uh, we presently show Intrepid and Yankee Clipper some 80 nautical miles apart. Got a bit of a wiggle there. Yes, sir. It's Apollo Control, Houston. We're at uh, 144 hours, 10 minutes now into the flight. We presently show Intrepid and uh, Yankee Clipper at uh, 74 nautical miles apart uh, with a closure rate of 141 feet per second. Lots of little autogen buildings there. Definitely some identifiable buildings, too. That's affirmative. I think we can see the Hagia Sophia there. In front of us, directly. see two bridges spanning the waterway. You've been uh, appropriately busy with ships, of course. You've been listening uh, to Intrepid and Yankee Clipper uh, discussing their uh, terminal phase initiation uh, solution. 
I'll improve the frame rates by using 3J FPS soon. Oh, it's not even on. Well, that's probably for the best. Let's get as good a look at the, this uh, city or terminal phase as possible uh, first. Burn is one uh, which effectively begins the intercept. Uh, it's uh, done some uh, when the uh, phasing between the two spacecraft is some 26 and a half degrees uh, from the local horizontal. We're at uh, 144 hours, uh, 13 minutes uh, now to the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. As the spacecraft get closer to each other, they'll be doing many maneuvers that are going to cause communication problems. So they're not really going to be talking to mission control very much because of that. And they're going to sound rather garbled. Get your light on again. I'm not quite in that phase yet, but yep. I believe that's Hagia Sophia and... Uh, a bunch of other unique buildings here. Okay. The blasting sun out there is making it very difficult to take marks. I got five of them, six of them so far. Huge city, of course. Wanted to get a quick population. 15 million. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're at uh, 144 hours at 20 minutes. Momentarily, Capcom Jerry Carr will pass along to the crew a ground-based solution of, uh, for TPI. Uh, Houston, uh, we have a TPI solution here. All these little burns they have to do, all with... All right, we're ready to copy. Okay, TIG at 14435. Acronyms. Five two. We're getting a delta VX of two five point niner. A delta VZ of okay. Minus I'm gonna one, turn on the plugin now. Your total delta to V is three zero. cut down on the autogen. Roger. That's uh, very close. Uh, our first cut was uh, V total of twenty eight point nine. Roger. Apollo Control Houston, uh, that uh, TPI maneuver uh, information is passed along uh, for advisory purposes only. Uh, the crew, uh, well, of course, does have the option time to, to uh, utilize this nice second, looking cockpit.
Intrepid, of course, has the option of going uh, with the onboard solution. Uh, the uh, TPI maneuver will be performed uh, while in Intrepid and Yankee Clipper. Lights just not blinking, that's yeah, all. Houston, it looks like our tracking lights burned out. Dick hadn't been able to find us in the sextant. And uh, on the first night side pass, we had little bits and pieces floating along with us, and we could tell that the tracking light was flashing on them. And we still have, I uh, presume, the same bits and pieces floating along and nothing's flashing on them, but I'm pretty sure it burned out. Roger, Pete. TPI is performed well, we're over coming the in a bit high. Or the far side pass. Hi, Intrepid. Okay. Uh, this is Houston. How'd your sweep down four and a half go? Uh, it's getting much cleaner in here running this way. And also, uh, Yankee Clipper informs me as the television all set up. When we come around the horn, we'll come around with the television on in box. Roger. Oh, that's a lot of lift. Okay. Who knows? You may get to see the first Wifferdill. Wifferdill was uh, a term they beat, used uh, for... Our electrical watchers say that the current indicates that your tracking light is on. For uh, weird maneuvers during docking that you probably shouldn't be doing if you're doing it right. Okay, now we just turned it off. Now, uh, does the current show that? It, it sure does, Pete. Uh, you're, you're flying through the air backwards, Ed, because I don't see it. Well, my ball tells me I'm pointed at you, Dick, and so does my radar. Well, you may have current, but you don't have any light. Uh, maybe that thing can burn out in such a manner that it still draws current, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, that's affirmative, Pete. Oh, I can't do that. We are way high. It was looking yes, good for a can. sec there. I, I'm just well, going to go around. Sure it's out. I Houston, don't see yeah. it flashing anywhere in the spacecraft. Not that I remember seeing it before, but I did remember it on bits and pieces, and, and uh, I don't see it anymore. It was just a bad approach. Yeah, when's, uh, when's uh, LOS, uh, Houston? We got LOS coming up for uh, both of you in three minutes. Okay, very good. You're only about 10 seconds apart. Okay. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 144 hours, 25 minutes. Uh, we presently show uh, Intrepid and Yankee Clipper uh, 53 nautical miles apart with a rate of closure of uh, 136 feet per second. We've got some uh, two minutes and uh, roughly two and a half minutes uh, before we have uh, loss of signal on uh, both vehicles. We're at uh, 144 hours, uh, 26 minutes now into the flight. And this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 144 hours, uh, 28 minutes uh, into the flight of Apollo 12. We've had uh, loss of signal with uh, both uh, Intrepid and the Yankee Clipper. Choppy. Okay. Oh, let's not go down anymore, please. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 145 hours, uh, 13 minutes uh, now into the flight. We're uh, some uh, one minute and 20 seconds away at this time from uh, reacquiring the command module uh, Yankee Clipper. 
as uh, the uh, two spacecraft uh, come around the far side of the moon, uh, the uh, Yankee Clipper uh, will be uh, configured for television, this to, uh, to show the final phases of rendezvous and docking. Really, Meanwhile, I wish uh, I had the television casts. Some numbers uh, by the Houston television pool, which indicate, in addition to U.S. networks, the Atlantic and Indian Ocean satellites are covering a total of 32 countries with a uh, potential audience of some 300 million persons. The Japanese news pool, also by satellite transmission, has a potential of 100 million persons. Line coverage is uh, being transmitted to uh, the Philippine Islands, Hong Kong, Hawaii, Korea, Australia, and Taiwan. In addition uh, to that, uh, tapes are being flown to uh, Africa and the Middle East uh, with a potential viewer count of... Well, there were tapes, apparently. <laughs> but, we're 10 uh, seconds away now from uh, forecast time of acquisition, and we'll stand by. They were still a ways off from everybody having tape recorders at home or anything like that so not quite that level of proliferation somewhere around there's gotta be tapes of this all this stuff probably just not digitized a lot of the NASA stuff is just not digitized not that they don't have it just don't have it in an accessible way Houston now. 88 feet per second. Clipper, Houston, we're going to need about a 60 degree roll right to get to high gain. Oop, let's get on with it. Pete Conrad reporting a closure rate of, of uh, 38 feet per second, about 1.7 nautical miles away. Oh, yeah, hours, I was in too minutes, much of a hurry. Uh, standing by for any uh, television transmission. Closure rate of 31 feet per second. Hey, one mile, I got you. Okay. Television signal uh, just. We've got a Russian co pilot. Standing by. Very fancy. Houston, uh, we're getting your TV black and white now. Processing will be long shortly. Hey, how's it look? Looking good in black and white, and uh, we think we can see Intrepid. Hey, how's it look? Looking good in black and white, and uh, we think we can see Intrepid. Five, five, four thousand five hundred feet at uh, 30 feet a second. Roger. Hold off a little more. It's close now. Huh? It's close now. He's four thousand feet away. Oh, oh it's so high, okay, but okay. Okay. Half a mile here, and uh, we have reverse thrusters. Down. 
thought it wasn't through that secondary drip for a while. And this primary doesn't smell too good either. That's a bubble. What's the secondary? All right. At half a mile. We could probably uh, take this taxiway. I checked half a mile. Oops. I stake on which stripe I was following. Okay, we have arrived. At Istanbul. We're still in Europe, but on the next flight we will be crossing over to, into Asia finally. Finally reaching Asia. Do I still have the brakes on? Clipper Houston, we got good color now, looking good. Okay, yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna pause there. They haven't docked yet, but they will dock very soon. And we will catch that when it happens in the next flight, which will be to Batman, which is in southern Turkey, right, very close to the border with Syria. So, uh, look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.